Hello friends, how are you today? Well, I thought today that we would take a look at one of the set of large waves of light that have been on the chart recently and to interpret it with you. You know, there were so many waves and each of them has like a different shape and in my view, a different meaning, but all together, they come together and tell a story. So I wanted to tell a part of that story with you right now. It's really interesting. There was there was one wave that was somewhat unusual in how it looked. It looked a lot different from the other waves. You know, we had these angel wings and we just had this like amazing kind of funnel of light that went past you know, 40 hertz on the Schumann chart and just was so strong. But but one of them was was kind of different shaped. And so I'm going to show you the chart right now and show you what I'm talking about. And then I'm going to do an interpretation for you that it's an, an intuitive interpretation, but I'm also going to bring in the data from the black charts of frequency, amplitude and quality. So let's take a look at that. This is the wave that I'm talking about right here. And one of my commenters mentioned that it looked like a, a white buffalo to them. And I ha would have to agree with that. It's really interesting. We have seen what I've called before a white buffalo wave on the chart more than once. And so we are getting it again this summer. We have also previously gotten it in this June, July time frame. So I'm going to look for my old videos on that and then I'll link one or two of them below and if you want to see where this has happened again you know you can check those out now what's really interesting is that this wave repeated let me show you you can see that the the general shape of the wave is similar so what you see is it repeated not here okay this is a different wave it's very different shaped but where it repeated was here I see a strange distorted face there. It does look like a buffalo head when it came around, because as I've mentioned, these energies can, can go around the planet more than once. Okay. And it's interesting because it came here. It started between 14 and 1500 hours here. It started around zero to 1 AM. So, it's it's interesting to me that sometimes these images that repeat, it's not exactly 24 hours. Sometimes the waves are moving slower. Sometimes they're moving faster. This is all quite fascinating. So I'm just observing with you and we're building our data set of observations and experiences here. Now here it looks like a white buffalo, okay? Or a buffalo head that's made of white resonance. Here, it looks like something else. Now there's something else present. I'm going to talk about this in a second, what I think that transformation was about. And it, it wasn't a transformation. It's a contrast. It's so exciting. Okay, I'll show you that in a sec. Here's a buffalo head, a buffalo and, and his or her head. <laughs> you see how the head shape is, right? And then they tend to have like a beard that hangs down. It's a lot like this, how it has that beard and it's kind of shaggy, right? This wave is kind of shaggy. In the past, when we've gotten the buffalo waves, it actually was huge on the chart. And each side of the buffalo was like a separate wave. This time we only have a small side okay and it's it's small and it's but in the past the head's been huge and even the sides of the head have been much much larger taking up a huge a huge number of the amount of the hertz on the chart the hertz spectrum here's another buffalo head and right here what you see is it's to the side but you can see the beard hanging this is buffalo from up in Canada. The white buffalo is an American Indian. Um, they might have it up in Canada too, but you know, there's myths and legends about the white buffalo and it's a very special event. Um, and so I talk about this in more, much more detail in my other videos on this that I'll link below, but it's an omen. It's an omen from God. And so I want to show you the contrast here and the images on the Schumann chart. This image does not look very attractive to me. It looks uncomfortable, the energy, and 
when I looked at this, oh, I looked at this with my girlfriend, Alex, you know, what she saw here was, you know, like the Golden Globe or the Academy Awards, the Hollywood actors give themselves golden statues. And this looks like one of those. There's a head, here's the shoulders and the chest, and then the statue goes down. You know, what I saw here was a distorted face, kind of like these weird uh, ceremonies or things that they do in Hollywood. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel attractive. And here there's a Chinese character, a Chinese man. And it's interesting because in this wave here, this actually turns into a Chinese funeral mask. I'm going to show you that in my next video. And so it's interesting that that came up again because the Chinese funeral mask is used to ward off evil spirits. And that seems to be what is above it right here and possibly even right here representing, you know, representing that. So the rest of it, the image I didn't, I didn't look too closely at, but you know, the sound of freedom movie is the hottest thing that's not in from Hollywood right now. And I don't think it's a coincidence that this has showed up at the same time. And it, it also, this was on the chart for um, just before the new moon. This was the 16th. The new moon was the 17th. Here's the contrast. Okay. You know, here's the energy representing divinity in the white Buffalo head. It comes around the, you know, again, and now it's representing the darkness of the world and maybe even specific aspects of that. But look how much smaller it is. Look how much less powerful. Look how much less impactful. You see, the darkness doesn't really have any source of its own. The only power, the only place the white resonance comes from for the darkness is where it can take it from living human beings with a living soul, where it can convince us to participate in its group uh, rituals and its group stories that it's trying to create. That's probably why these images were like strange Hollywood stuff and Hollywood type distortions, because that's the message here, you know, and it's interesting because I was on a, um, a little group chat and, um, <laughs> You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to switch to talking to you in the camera because I want to talk to you for a second about this. I think it's really interesting because I think what's happening here, the, the Schumann resonance represents, I'm using it as a map of group consciousness. And so it represents something here that's important. So um, I was on a group chat and we were talking about stupid people and someone also brought it up because there's a video going around that has millions of views and then Jordan Peterson's been talking about something related anyway so it's a it's up as a topic and um someone in the in the chat somebody well-meaning came in and said oh you know how dare you judge you know uh how dare you judge <laughs> I'm, I'm paraphrasing this person's words and so what you know, a very wise person said to me as I was discussing this with them was, you know, in our founding document documents in this country, the United States of America, um, the founding documents say all men are created equal. But it doesn't say that throughout their lives that 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 equality remains, right? And what's the deeper truth here? We are all created equal in the eyes of God. But then what we do with our lives is up to us. If we make stupid choices or decisions or we become stupid or we turn away from God or we turn towards God, right? Whether we make the most of what we have in this life, what we're born with and then what we create, you know, in alignment with God's truth for us, right? The truth of who we are, or even if we create, right? In our traumatized states and our distortions from the solid truth of who we are, this is what we have a right to do as a living human being. And this is gifted to us, right? This is gifted to us by the creator, by God. It's interesting because I said I would refer to the data in the black charts. Well, what's been, what was really interesting was that both of these waves had dips 
in the frequencies, which to me shows the presence of divinity, the, the presence of expanded consciousness that we apply or that's being applied or that's being offered to us here. But it was so interesting because the amplitudes of the energy were very low and the qualities were very low. And although the qualities, um, which as they strengthen, they show, in my view, the truth of like the natural, what, what that Schumann resonance range of frequencies truly represents, right? The energy of it, the truth of what it is. Well, in the green area, which in my view represents humanity, you know, there, there's just been all this spiking to, you know, tip, what I call typical highs. But there was none of that even during these two waves that, I, that we're talking about in this video. And so it's almost like we had the backing of consciousness, the backing of the divine, right? And the offer to expand our consciousness. But here's the thing. It's up to us to reach for that offer, to engage, to do the work, to expand our consciousness, to do the work in our lives, to live our lives as we choose to. And do external circumstances happen? Do things happen that aren't fair, that are unjust, that are, you know, that suck in life? Yes, that happens. And no one gets away from that, I don't think. <laughs> Um, but, but it's up to us, you know, how we use the circumstances to then better ourselves, to learn from them, to grow out of, and to grow into new states of being. And all this is offered to us. And this is the part of life that's truly an adventure in my view. Well, <laughs> Um, I I wanted to now share a story with you, and um, I wanted to share a story with you, and here's the story, okay? This is a personal story, and, you know, I've, I've said before that in the past 10 years, I've gone through a really, really tough time in my life. Well, what I've been really marveling at is how God's got our back, and how the proof of that is the case in the world. You know, how the proof of that can show in our lives. I'll give you an example. Um, this is a, I'm going to tell two stories here. So the first story is, you're all familiar with my, my wonderful dog. Well, about five or six nights ago, my, um, you know, my dog was, you know, sleeping on the couch. <laughs> and um, I, I awoke at, really early in the morning, I woke at 5 a.m. And the reason I awoke was because I heard this. I At first, I thought it was an insect. This felt like wings, okay, next to my ear. But it did not sound like an insect. You know, insects tend to have a high-pitched sound. And so, yeah, my dog, did you hear him? He just was like, like okay, she's telling the story. But... Um, <laughs> Now he's getting up. So, so what happened was I just, I decided to get up. Okay. And I turned on the light and for whatever reason, I decided to, to go, you know, you know, talk to my dog, right? Say, Hey dude, you know, how are you doing? And the weird thing was he was not responsive. Okay. He wasn't responsive. I won't go into the whole story. He's okay now, but, um, I I became really concerned because he wasn't responding. And so what ended up happening was, you know, uh, I sat with him for, you know, I don't know, a good 45 minutes just loving on him. I was, you know, tears were running down my eyes because I wasn't sure what was going to happen. And um, just, you know, he was he was obviously still alive. But and um so I just decided to, you know, just petting him, loving him and telling him I loved him and just all this stuff. And so I just I, I just knew like, OK, I'm going to take a break now. I'm going to let, let him let him be. And I got up and I went in the kitchen and I was kind of making coffee or tea. And then I I decided to I decided to 
I think I took food out. Okay. I don't know why I did that at seven. No, I don't know if it was six or seven in the morning. Who knows? And suddenly he just jumps off the couch, gets up, runs over and wants to eat. <laughs> you know how dogs are. <laughs> they just, they seem like what's going on. And then suddenly they're just fine. So, so that happened. And I thought I've been just marveling the past few days at how, God's got my back, you know, at the exact moment I needed to be there and be up for him and be present with him. It's like he decided to come back into his body, you know, and I was talking with my girlfriend who has a medical intuitive. And what she thought is when I heard like the, what I thought was these wings near my ears, you know, that that's, that's kind of when the moment of whatever event happened for him went on. And, you know, I did over the next, you know, th on the third day after that, or the third day of this situation, um, I saw his body, his non-physical body walking beside him in the physical. And then he's come back into the body now. So I guess he's, you know, it's all, well, all is well now. <laughs> I won't go into the rest of it, but, you know, I, I'm going to be giving him something another friend recommended and so on. Okay. So all is well. Now. Well, I've just really marveled, you know, like that, that essentially, you know, his higher self, his angel self, my angels, God, you know, my soul woke me up at the exact moment that he needed me to be there for him. If he was going to, come back into the body. And I guess, you know, obviously that was his choice, right? I didn't, you know, it was 5 a.m. You know, I could have slept till 10. I don't know. I could have slept till 8. I could have slept till, you know, my usual time I get up um, and start working. But, oh my gosh, I've just been so grateful over that the last few days. And it's just, you know, I was... I was listening to a video about faith and evidence. There's a, I don't remember the name of the YouTube channel, but it's this guy who does like philosophy and history and, um, you know, Christian history and the Bible stuff. I don't know. And he was talking about how that biblically faith has always been evidence-based and it wasn't until, I don't know, very recently that, faith was um, said to be non-evidence based. And I didn't know that. And then he was giving examples. Okay. But it's interesting because I've just been marveling over this in my life, you know, that it's, it's strengthened my faith, you know, that if for some reason I need to wake up in the middle of the night, now, these kinds of things have happened before, but just to have this like where it saves someone's life or, you know, in this case, the life of my dog, you know, like that's he's a family member, you know, that's it's pretty big. OK, um, like right now, I just feel so in the moment, like with my divine, divine guidance and stuff that I'm talking to you over this. But it's just, you know, it's so big. OK. And it restores my faith, you know, because all these people are making videos about this might happen, that might happen, the time of whatever, the timing of whatever. And I've just chosen to put my faith in God's guidance for me over certain things. I mean, there's only so much you can do at some point to prepare or to get ready or, you know, we get get ready fatigue, you know. We get preparation fatigue, I guess. We get pantrying fatigue, I don't know. Um, and this just was so amazing because it showed me, you know, it showed me that, again, that God's got my back. And, you know, my angels, my guidance, my own soul is here for me. We're never alone. And when we need to be, you know, up when we need to be notified when we need to be awake when we need to be doing something you know why did i get up and then go talk to my dog like you know that's not necessarily the first thing on my mind when i wake up in the morning 
but it was that morning. So it was a miracle as far as I'm concerned that occurred. And it was the fact that God's got my back and it is, it is evidence for that for me. Right. And as humans, we benefit from this. We benefit from seeing it in what we think is the real world. Okay. And, um, I, I'm just, you know, I'm just so grateful for this. Well, now I have a second story for you. Okay. Ready? So here's my second story. I, I was going to sleep and my dog decided that he was going to sleep at the head of my de- bed and then like, like curl around my pillow or something like, like be on the pillow. And because of this recent event happening, I was like, welcome, you know, like, sure, let's do that. Okay. You can be wherever. <laughs> But I also knew that it, it kind of meant something, you know, because he was, the energy was very protective. And this is where I want to talk about the white buffalo and the presence of divinity for us and the fact that the light is so much stronger than the darkness and then any distortion we suffer in our life. Well, I, you know, I woke up in a vision, you know, I what happens when you have a waking vision, my experience is that when my consciousness becomes present in the dream time where I'm fully aware, I suddenly am aware of both what, you know, the past and the current moment in the dream time. Okay. In the vision. So I will, so I was in a vision and I have been practicing this for a long time how to be a present in the dream and how to be present in the dream without shifting my dimensional state of being because the dream time in my view you know it's part of the astral it's part of the fourth dimension but but we can be present in a fifth dimensional state of being in the dream time and so i've learned how to stay in the fifth dimensional state without dropping into a state of mind uh, which shifts the energy to a lower dimensional state. Anyway, some of you may understand what I'm talking about here. Another time we can do another teaching on this, uh, you know, this uh, aspect of dreaming and being in visions and having visions. So what happened was that, you know, I had a very hard time in my life. It was almost exactly 10 years ago. Okay. And I was, I've been thinking about this, uh, because I've had body pains that relate to this time in my life coming up again and some other stuff. And it was, it was extremely, extremely difficult time in my life. So a year before that, 11 years ago, I just started to have this amazing experiences that were in part, right? They were like, a new, a new purpose for me, like soul level started to show itself. And all these things came together. Well, in the vision, what happened was, and, and I've been feeling blocked creatively. I don't know if you can tell that because I've been putting a lot of videos out, but if you're on my sub stack, you can tell, you know, I, I've had an extremely hard time writing <laughs> And it's it's been really hard for me because I'm a writer and I love writing and you know, writing is a very deep part of my creativity and I'm I'm kinda good at it, okay. Over the years I've gotten very you know, very good at it and telling stories through writing. And I just can't like make myself write and I haven't published an article and of course then I have, you know, all these emotions that really aren't they're just, you know, the negative forces attempting to influence me over what's going on. And since I'm aware of that, I, I don't listen to them. And I, you know, I, it's a great exercise in clearing energy and fine tuning divine guidance. Because, you know, divine guidance is always supporting us, right? God's always got our back. And so from the standpoint of making even this video 
divine timing comes into play. Like to really interpret the white buffalo wave, I had to have the dream. Not that I had last night, you know, the in the night that I'm making this video because I've been up since early. Okay, but it's very early. It's early in the morning, but it's not that early. But but at any rate, um, I need to finish up here because my my battery and my computer is almost <laughs> almost done. So basically what happened was um what happened was that I couldn't make this video until I had this vision to interpret the white buffalo energy because the white buffalo is like a miraculous event that happens for society. But I believe that we have these in our lives. And what I realized when I had this vision two nights ago and where my dog protectively like put his head on my pillow and I was just like, dude, after what happened, you know, now five or six nights ago, fine, sleep wherever you want, you know, <laughs> put your head on my pillow. But I knew that he was also being protective. And so in the in the vision that I had and the details are mine, right, that's for between me and God. But there was a lot of darkness and I had to really step forward in my, you know, soul level presence and say no to the darkness and just be really present and sort of make a declaration or make some declarations about what I wanted. And this was the breakthrough that I needed. Okay. And as I was thinking about this, okay, <laughs> so hopefully I'll be writing soon. But as I was thinking about this, um, and, you know, since having this vision, what I realized is that this vision of this great dark time in my life, that the, also the brightest, one of the brightest times in my life where I was visited by my own soul, one of the most intense, incredible spiritual experiences that I've had, which was about 11 years ago, you know, happened in my life. And I just was thinking, oh my God, like I went through this incredible darkness, like these incredible challenges. How could the light have been so brave for me? And then I realized when I saw the Schumann resonance wave and, you know, the person commented about the white buffalo. Thank you very much for doing that. And I realized that we get these times in our lives. It's it's. The white buffalo is about a sign for humanity, a sign for society, right? For the society that the white buffalo information came to. But a lot of people are looking at these, you know, ancient prophecies and traditional prophecies by the American Indians. What I wanted to say here is we get this personally, that that we get these white buffalo events or event, you know, if we have it even once in our life, it can be enough to sustain us. And, you know, at the time, was I praying for connection? Was I talking to God? You know, was I, you know, was I communing with Jesus? That was one of the times in my life where I was literally being shown, um, had to do certain kinds of energy work by Jesus, by Archangel Michael, by, you know, my spiritual guidance, the highest light that Jesus told me to work with. And, but then I had these experiences and I had this incredible experience of meeting my soul, like it manifesting into this reality. And see, that's how I understand about that. We need to reach for these things. Because you see, what I learned in incredible depth from that experience was that as soon as an idea of questioning, if is this real, is this really, you know, came in, my soul would, in that experience, would draw away from me. And I, I, I immediately understood that if I chose to question, it would draw away from me because it's incredible unbelievably like I can't even explain how much the soul loves you your own soul loves you that was my experience of that and that it loves me so much that it granted grants me whatever experience I choose 
from wherever my consciousness is at. And it will not interfere with that. Like, this is incredible. And um, wow, I just, and this was an incredible light in my life. And it, boom, you know, once this ping, you know, of, oh my God, this is my, like, I just had like a, 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 this visit from my own soul. Like how that, how does that even happen? How does it reach me here in the darkness? You know, but it did. And was I reaching for it? Was I praying? Was I doing spiritual work? Yes. And in my darkest moment, God was there for me. And so it's like the, the white buffalo event. You know, and none of the darkness, it's too small. It can't interfere with this level of spiritual experience. It's the most incredible thing. I feel like there's so much I want to tell you about this. And what it relates with is, you know, I'm on Twitter all the time. And the thing is, is that just like it used to be when all of this conspiracy information was all over the place before 2016 when all of that you know restriction on the flow of information really started to lock down and then you couldn't find anything about anything but you could but you had to look in certain places but whatever now twitter is just like oh my god like it's just like all this information and you really have to have personal discernment right? You have to have to know how to discern between, well, this is true, this isn't true. I'm not going to go into all of that. I've talked about discernment on many other videos, but, but there's a lot of fear. There's a lot of, you know, this might happen, that might happen literally across the board. There's so many different events that might happen right now, according to people on Twitter, it's off the hook. <laughs> I mean, you just have to laugh, like, holy cow. And then on my last video, you know, my new moon videos for July 2023, I'll link those two in the video detail here. It's incredible, okay? It's incredible. I talked about sine waves, astrology, energy, going to the depths, how this new moon relates with sine waves and the depths. It's a great video to watch about how electromagnetic energy works in our lives through astrology. And then even in the video, I'll link the long one below where I went through this whole thing. And I linked it to the Schumann resonance as well. And I did a little comparison at the beginning. Um, well, anyway, so, you know, there are all these choices of disastrous events you might want to be aware of, afraid of, prepare for, you know, it goes on and on. And so ultimately, once you've done whatever you're guided to do, all there is left in my view is faith, hope and trust, you know, and maintaining a good attitude, being in relationship with the divine and, and then seeing where it takes you. You know, because if you believe darkness turns to light, if you know your highest good unfolds, right, in divine timing, nothing can stop divine in your life. That's why the white buffalo wave is so big, beautiful, and brilliant in the Schumann, um, in the chart that I showed you earlier in the video, and why the wave that has the images, you know, of darkness after the wave is so small, you know, because... That's the divine message in that wave, right? That God allows these things. It's up to us to take personal responsibility to transform them. And what the darkness tries to do is tries to get us to wait. So if there's anything where you go, oh, those guys are working on that. I don't have to do anything. That's where I suggest you consider is there something for me to do here? Anywhere where you are like, oh, I'm waiting for that to this to happen. If that's going on in your life, this is one of those places where get up and take action, you know, in alignment with your spiritual guidance, what's in alignment with your highest good. It's your personal discernment, what you need to do in your life. But wherever you're waiting, 
you know, and that's different than divine timing. You know, with my writing, for example, I couldn't that that flow that I feel when I'm like on. And let me tell you something. I've been writing consistently since 2013 on the Internet, in my personal life. And so when the when I'm meant to be writing or I'm just tired or whatever, but I've got it like I can do it, you know, but it was just like the door was shut. And the reason why is because it was divine timing. I needed to go through these series of events. And it's like my dog left and came back for me. You know, my dog left and came back to teach me.